action. Hi, this is Eric. I am the Grey Goat, and this is my garage, the Grey Goat Garage, and we're powered by OMBWarehouse.com. Uh, OMB Warehouse, we, we sell a Makuni uh, 22 millimeter carburetor kit, and everybody has to have a, a 22 millimeter Makuni these days. I, I get it. You know, my Facebook Stage One kit is 18 pound springs and a 22 millimeter Makuni carburetor, but most people have no idea how these carburetors work, even how to install them. And we're, we're gonna go through some of those issues that you'll be faced with with this carburetor right now. So let's take a look. Here, here I've got my brand new carburetor in the box, never touched. So we've got the air filter here. We have the intake manifold here. Here is the carburetor. Here's the adapter for the, um, the velocity stack adapter to put the standard two and a half inch air filter onto a, a uh, Chinese Makuni carburetor. We have an extra jet here. We have the intake manifold gasket and we have the inner throttle cable. And that's all we have. Let's get that box out of the way. So before we get started, with, with anything, what I'm gonna do is get this carburetor out of the bag, okay? So, you'll notice that the main jet size right now is a 95 and the pilot jet's a 38. So, what we're gonna do is, I'm not gonna mess with the pilot jet on this carburetor. All I'm gonna do right now, before I start to install it, is get the 130 main jet in this carb. And there's four bolts on the fuel bowl, four screws. We're just going to get those removed. And then once we get those out, then we'll get you a close up of what's going on here. But uh, big sausage fingers and little parts is not always the best deal in town. Okay, so I've got the screws out, and now I'm just going to slowly take this bowl off of the carburetor. I want to make sure that this gasket, the o ring type gasket, stays where it's supposed to be, and then we'll get a screwdriver and remove the main jet. Now what I need to do, take a nine millimeter wrench, maybe an eight millimeter wrench, and hold this in the body of the carb while we just take out the main. Okay, and you'll see there's an O-ring on here, so we don't have to go real tight with this. But we're going to snug it up a little bit. Now, set the other main jet off to the side, and let's get this 130 main jet installed. And no, I haven't opened up this kit yet. It's my first, uh, first time opening up this kit. Okay, so I'm just going to snug this main jet into the carburetor and while we're here I'm going to point out this adjustment right here. Anytime you see an adjustment between the slide and the flange of the carburetor where it goes into the engine that's a fuel adjustment and this fuel adjustment here will add more fuel from idle to mid-range so what we're going to do is we're going to start that at two turns out and I'm going to use my trusty old main jet screwdriver. And I'm just going to turn this in gently until I feel it seat. And then I'm going to go out one, two, three, four. That's two full turns. That's where I'm going to start that setting. Okay? Once this engine's on the bike, then, then we'll have to, you know, make the appropriate changes for it. But now, make sure that the pin is still 
by the, the we're holding the float where it's supposed to be. Make sure that the needle valve is still hooked around the top of the float. Now we can just install this float bowl carefully back onto the carb and put in the four screws that hold the float bowl on. And you don't have to go Megillah Gorilla when you're tightening these down. Well, we're, essentially we're getting them snug so they don't back out and we're just compressing that o-ring seal on there. If you take everything on this carburetor and go too tight, you have a chance of bending some of those surfaces and it won't ever seal if you do that. So we just need to get them snug. Okay, so now the carb is ready to go on to the engine, but we're gonna to have to install the intake manifold first. With the intake manifold, We have the manifold, obviously, and then we have screws to hold everything together. There's two longer screws and two shorter screws. The shorter screws is what's going to bolt this manifold to the engine, okay? So make sure that the D-shaped port here lines up with the D-shaped port here. And don't scream at your phone or your computer and say, well, that damn dummy, he's putting these things on without a gasket. Now I'm doing this on purpose. Okay, so there, there's a, a specific way that, that I get these done that is important to me. So we don't have to tighten both of those down all the way. We just need to have one that's going to hold this manifold to the engine and keep it lined up. Now I'm going to take my carburetor and run one of the bolts through the back side of the intake manifold and I'm going to get the, the nut started on here. I guess I should have got the right wrenches out to begin with too. And this side's a little harder because there's a lot of stuff in the way. Okay, now that we got that started, Hopefully I can find the right Allen wrench as I was not prepared. Okay. So now we're gonna take a 10 millimeter wrench and we're gonna start tightening this down. What I wanna do is I just wanna get it snug. This is a, a lock bolt. So with, with the nylon insert, so we're just going to get it just so it's snug. Like I say, this other side, a little more difficult to do. Need to cut down one of these wrenches. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain, this will all make sense here in a second, I promise. And no, we're, we're not like the big guys. We don't edit stuff out here. You, you get to see how it's being done by a very much um, amateur mechanic.
Okay, so starting to get this snug down, but you can see how it's, it's shifted down a little bit. What I'm going to want to do now is get this carb level this way and relatively snug towards the manifold. Okay, and now I'm going to remove the manifold from the engine. Yeah, this screw is about 12 feet long. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hope you can get a close up of the, the carburetor on the inside. Let me. If you can see, the o ring on the flange of this carburetor is not line, lined up with the intake manifold. What that's going to do is create a vacuum leak and you'll never ever get the carburetor tuned unless the o-ring from the carburetor's flange is sealed to the intake manifold. So what I need to do now is move this down a little bit by loosening up my bolts just a little bit. Sorry. Let's see if that was enough. And move the, the carburetor needs to go up on the intake manifold and make sure that the, the venturi of the carburetor is perfectly lined up with the inside of the intake manifold here. So I can see now that, that the rubber O-ring is sealing all the way around the intake manifold. So now I can go back and tighten up the intake manifold to carburetor screws. This, this little extra step will prevent you from a lot of headaches moving forward. So now the carburetor is bolted to the intake manifold. I know that it's, it's level. I know that the O-ring is going to seal the carb flange to the intake manifold. Now I can take my gasket, wherever I put it, and make sure that I match this gasket up to the intake. And then get my intake manifold mounted to my engine. Maybe. Make sure that gasket doesn't slip out. You see it how it, it slipped off the the other screw. So we have to make sure that everything's staying where it's supposed to be. And now I can also tell that my carburetor's crooked again. So I will have to go back, readjust the carburetor, and get it level. It's the, the details in doing a Makuni carburetor like this that's what is important for everything to go together correctly and operate properly. Um, if you have a vacuum leak, uh, a vacuum leak is caused when the valves open, the pistons coming down in the cylinder, pulling air and fuel into this engine. 
it creates a vacuum. And if there's a leak anywhere between the slide on the carburetor and the inside of the engine, that's called a vacuum leak and you'll never get it tuned. Um, everybody always wants to blame the carburetor and start going with, hey, I need bigger jets. Um, it's running too lean. Well, no, you have to make sure that, that everything else is proper first. So as long as, as you're sure that everything else is sealed upright, there's no vacuum leaks, then we can get everything done. But th this is one thing, I'm doing this quickly because I'm on video and, you know, I get nervous. But um, take your time when you're doing this stuff. You don't, don't be in a hurry. If you're in a hurry, then we're going to goof things up and then you're going to have more issues. So let's get this carburetor straight. I'm going to look down through the center of it and make sure that everything is aligned. And now I can tighten it back down. So take your time when doing this. this. This is very important. The bulk of what I do all day long is helping people that don't understand these carburetors get these carburetors set. Okay, we're gonna have to get a. I'm gonna have to cut. I have a lot of Allen wrenches that I've taken. I've cut just the end off to make it shorter to get into tight places like this. So we'll come back and get that done. Now, you saw me pull the slide out of the carburetor to show you through the Venturi to to get this set. You'll notice this slide is cut on one side. That's the side that goes out towards the air filter, and the flat side goes towards the carburetor. This should only go in one way, unless you have a very large hammer. Um, the last Makuni carburetor I put on, at high RPMs, the engine felt like it was cutting out and, and nearly shutting off. So many people think that that was, um, they're running out of fuel. Well... I know from experience that no, I wasn't running out of fuel because I was running a fuel pump. So what I did was I came back to the slide and I pushed the needle out. You'll notice that there's five grooves on this needle. If I move the groove, if I move the E-clip to the top groove, that will make it leaner because this tapered end of this rod will stay in the jet longer. If I move this E-clip down, it'll make it richer because it'll expose more, more of the taper out of the main jet once, once the slide's going up. So I, my, my engine was cutting off at high RPMs. I knew it wasn't a fuel supply issue. I took and moved the E-clip all the way up to the top and that cleaned it up. What happens with these engines is we need heat in the cylinder head to make power. If you have too much fuel going through the carburetor, it's going to cool that head down, it's going to foul the plug, and it's going to feel like somebody's hitting the on-off switch or you're running out of gas. That's not always the case. So you have to be able to pull the spark plug, read the spark plug. A black plug means that it's too rich. A white plug means that it's too lean. So. I, I didn't even mess with it. I pulled, I pulled the, the slide out, pulled the needle out, uh, readjusted the E-clip all the way up to the top, put it back together, runs perfectly. So don't always assume that you're running out of fuel. That's not always the case. So this needle just slides back down in here. This little clip fits in there like that and you'll just push that straight down in. Try not to get it cocked like I just did. If you do, you can still keep pushing it. That little funny shaped clip is what holds that needle in place. So we need that, okay? So the Makuni throttles, the Makuni carburetor kits, they only come with an inner cable. 
and that that's for racers that uh, that are using um, the cart racers that are using the um, hydraulic tube as as a throttle line. So with this, we have a kit at OMB Warehouse that will will bolt here. You take a short piece of inner cable and or or conduit and run from the top of the carb to the front of the bracket. I'll I'll include that link in the description of this and that'll help you get this set up. So once you get this carb running, then I drop and stuff. Let me put that on. This is labeled as a choke lever, but it's really not a choke at all. It's what's called an enrichment circuit. You'll see this brass plunger right here. When I move this choke lever up, that pulls that brass plunger up out of the body of the carburetor. What that does is that, that opens up a port inside the engine and allows more fuel to come into the engine because we need a richer mixture to get started with a cold engine. But when, when the engine's warmed up, we have that down. So this is the run position with the plunger in the body of the carburetor. If you have a genuine Makuni, you'll have a lever that comes across the other side of this carburetor, but still the same methodology applies. The plunger in the body of the carburetor, that is the run position. With the plunger out of the body of the carburetor, that is the start position or the choke or the enrichment circuit. So don't try and tune your carburetor with, with the choke lever up. If you have a vacuum leak, yeah, the choke lever up's how you're gonna have to run, but fix your vacuum leak before you start working on the choke lever. Okay, so you don't need to change the pilot jet on these. You just need to change the main jet out. Make sure that your two and a half turns on the brass screw up underneath the bottom of the flange. We can start that tuning from there. If you're too rich on the bottom, turn that screw in. If you're too lean on the bottom, bring that screw out. Okay, start it at two turns out. And th th those are the most common problems I see with these carburetors, and uh, it does consume quite a bit of my time. The only thing that I can say about performance carburetors is if you put a performance carburetor on a stock engine, you're not maximizing the benefit of the carburetor and you have an opportunity to hurt your engine, okay? The billet um, flywheels, the billet connecting rods, those are there for a reason. The stock connecting rod will not hold up uh, above 5,000, 5,500 RPMs. So that's why we use billet parts and uh, a performance carburetor, gonna wanna see more compression, gonna wanna see a bigger cam and some billet parts installed. So I hope this has helped you and um, Go out there and have fun. But when you're tuning a Makuni carburetor, make one change at a time. If you make one change and it didn't work for you, then take that change back. It's the guys that, that will make multiple changes, multiple different um, approaches to this, and they, there's no point of reference if we do that. So one change at a time and then test it. Always remember, a gasoline engine can only be tuned under a load. Free revving an engine takes less fuel than having an engine under a load running it. So that's why the engine dyno guys, they have a clutch on those engines and they're running that to an inertia wheel to get a load on that engine, okay? And, and to check the numbers. So make sure that you, you do one change, you go out and you ride your vehicle and then see how it performs. Make, if, if that helped, make one more change. Don't make multiple changes, please. Okay? I'm Eric. I am the Grey Goat. I hope this helps you. Uh, we're powered by ombwarehouse.com. If you'd like to uh, send me a message, if you have questions, you can do that through YouTube, or you can send me an email, help at ombwarehouse.com. Thank you.